Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemeg TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create some custom navigation in Slider Revolution 5. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. For this example, I'm just going to create a typical default slider. We're going to create a couple of slides, but what we're going to concentrate on is how we can set up the navigation. Now, Slider Revolution 5 ships with a whole host of navigation options that allow us to customize this in an almost infinite way. So we're going to take a look at some of the common options. We're going to take a look at some of the settings. But what I recommend with this is just dig in, have a play about with the settings, adjust things, save it, see what it looks like, and just get used to what the different settings are going to do for you. So let's take a look at what we've got on offer, and let's start by making some of those actual changes to our navigation. So what I've done is I've created the basics. I've given our slider a name of navigation. We're going to set it to a standard slider, default slide, and I just set the height to be 500 pixels. Now, obviously, you can set this to anything you want. This is just a demonstration purposes. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the navigation section on the right-hand side under the slider settings panel, and we're going to take a look at what's available to us in there. So you can see we've got six different options available to us. We've got arrows, bullets, tabs, thumbs, touch, and miscellaneous. And you can see we can turn most of these things on and off. So at the moment, we can enable the arrows. We can switch over to bullets and we can enable those. The same with tabs, the same with thumbs, the same with touch. And under miscellaneous, we've got some different options. So let's take a look at what these do. And let's take a look at how we can implement those on our site itself. Now, what I would recommend you do is pay close attention to the options that actually pop up and how the little thumbnail as you hover over it will show you what the setting that you adjust is going to look like. This is going to save you a lot of time when you're actually choosing the options you want or when you're going through just to see what options are available before you sort of commit to those and then have to reload your page and save and so on. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. So if I enable the arrows, you can see we now get a whole host of different options below. You can see that we've got the arrow styles, the visibility, the left arrow position and right arrow position and so on. So let's just take a look at the arrow styles, for example. Now you can see when I take my mouse over this option, you can see it shows us in the pop-up window what the arrows are going to look like. So if I choose a different option, you can see the arrows change. And again, if I choose another option again, so each time I choose a different option, this pop-up is going to show me what they're going to operate like in a demonstration version on our website. So you can go through, find one that you think is actually going to fit to the, the style that you want, and then you can kind of say, well, okay, that's the basics. Now I can go through and tweak those things. So I can say, do I want them to always show? Yes or no? Do I want to hide them under a certain size or over a certain size? So you could say you want the navigation to change basically based upon the screen resolution that the end user is using. So this is great if you want to do things like you want one style of navigation for someone that uses a laptop or a computer screen and another style of navigation for someone that uses a touchscreen device like a tablet or a phone. You know, again, so like I say, you can go through and you can customize these. I recommend really you know, taking some time going through and seeing what these options allow you to do to your actual slider. So, for example, if we say hide under, if I choose that and switch it on, you can see I can now specify the width from the option that pops up. If I turn it back off, that disappears. And the same for hide over. We can adjust the positions of the arrow. So we can say the left, we want it to be on the left, centered, or we want it to be on the right. Why you'd want the left arrow on the right hand side, I'm not really quite sure, but you know, strange things happen. So we put that back to left. The vertical line, do you want that to be top, center, or bottom? And again, like I say, you can see that every time we make an adjustment to this, we can actually see what it looks like in the pop up window. So this is great if you really want to get it right in there and start customizing the offsets, the vertical offset, the horizontal offset, so you can position them in your slider exactly as you want. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to turn the arrows off and I'm going to jump over to thumbs because we're going to use some thumbnails on this one for, for this particular demonstration. So I'm going to switch those on and again you can see that now that pops up and shows us what our uh, slide is going to look like once we actually go through and set all these options. So let's go through, set some of these up, then we'll go over to the slides it's set up themselves, we'll put some slides in, then we'll set things up to work correctly when we're using thumbnails. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and take a look at some of the options you have available to us. You can see we've got quite a few different types of thumbnails. And again, this will give us a, a preview of what these look like. So we can have them just as an ordinary square thumbnail. We can have it with a sort of inset shadow to make it look like it's, it's inset into the page. We can choose circular ones. And let's go for those, just take a look at those. We can specify the visible thumbs amount. In other words, the maximum number of thumbnails that are displayed at any one time. We can adjust the spacing between those. So we can say, well, let's set that to 10 pixels as opposed to five. And well, let's come down to take the thumbnail contain container size. Let's, let's set that to 150 just for the sake of it, just so we can see what they look like. And the container height we'll set to 75. I'm just making these values up just to play about to see what they look like. We can always come back in and change those at any point in the future. Visibility, we want them to always show. That's fine. And the position, you can see we can do inside the slider. On the left-hand side, outside the slider. On the right-hand side, outside the slider. On the top, or in this instance, I'm going to put on the bottom. And I can specify the horizontal alignment. I'm going to put that to the center. Yeah, I think I'll leave everything else on there. That all looks fine to me. And we'll just hit save. So that's going to commit those settings. And with all of these, we can come back in and we can tweak these to our heart's content to get exactly what we're looking for. So let's switch over to the slider. Let's take a look at that and we'll set some settings on there and I'll show you how they actually affect the slider itself inside our website. So let's jump over to that now. And there's our slide editor. Now, if you've seen any of the other videos, you're going to get used to sort of seeing this screen. It's going to be where you're going to do most of your work. So I've got one slide at the moment and there's nothing on that. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to set a main background. I'm going to set, choose an image on there. It doesn't really matter what I'm going to choose. I'll choose something from one of the templates. But what I do need to do, because I want to work with thumbnails, is I need to switch to the thumbnail tab. And I need to now choose what I want to use that thumbnail. Now, obviously, you could create custom thumbnails that are going to be exactly what you want, or you can use the thumbnail that represents the actual image on screen. So let's just do that. Let's just say choose an image. I'll choose that one. Same image again. And, yeah, that's fine. So you can see it now shows me exactly what that's going to look like. So we've got a small thumbnail. I'll save that. And let's create a second slide. So we'll just go add a blank slide. And we'll just choose a different image for the background on that. So we'll just come into main background, choose something on there. And let's just go for this cartoon one. Insert that. Jump over to thumbnail. Choose image. Choose the same image again. Insert. That'll generate a thumbnail for us. And now we can just hit save slide. Once we've done that, I'm going to just jump over to the page that I've got that I've set up just to show this slide. So let's just do that now. And as you can see, there's our thumbnails. For some strange reason, they've gone a little bit oval, but we won't worry about that. We'll go back and take a look at how we can change those in a second. So you can see we can just click on those and we can navigate through to them. We could set up additional navigation methods. At the moment, we've just got this one, so this allows us to navigate through. So let's just jump back to Slider Revolution and let's go back to the Slider Settings and let's make some changes to that. And let's take a little look at what these things look like. So let's go back to the navigation. Let's just say... Let's have some arrows on there. Let's enable those. Say, yes, we'll have those on there. And that style will do fine for me. And I'll just come to the thumb section and I'll say, I want to change the style of this. I don't want round ones. I want those to be, yeah, square works for me. And we'll just hit save settings. Now, if we jump back over to the site, refresh this page. You can see now we've got our square or rectangular slides and we now have the arrows. So we've got two forms of navigation that are set up on this. So you can see we can build upon the navigation and not limit ourselves to just one style. We can quickly and easily set up multiple styles that allow the slider to operate in multiple different ways. So again, let's just jump back over to those settings. Let's just say, well, I don't really want to have those arrows on this. Let's just turn those off. But We'll have some bullets on this. We'll enable that and we'll say we'll have these ones. That'll do. And we'll specify the position of those. Actually, we'll leave them where they are. That looks good to me. So we'll just hit save. Jump back over and refresh this. And we should now see that we get, there we go. There's our second type of navigation.
So hopefully what you can see is that the navigation option inside Slider Revolution 5 really does give you a huge array of flexible ways of setting up the navigation for any kind of slider you may want on your page. What I recommend, like I say at the top of this video, is get stuck in there, create a slider like I've done, and start playing about with the different settings and see how they work, see how they interact with each other, until you kind of find exactly where it is you were looking for. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new additions to this channel. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you put up on there, and we try to reply to everything that we get asked. Finally, check out wptouch.co.uk for exclusive content only available on our website. And remember that we release new videos every single Wednesday. Anyway, until next time, take care.